My Perfect. name is Vahid Chitsos, part of the Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Hey, for me, it's Adam Kipnis from Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, so we're in the same time zone. So cool, cool, awesome. So let's dive into it. Business and marketing. What is the definition of a business and what's the definition of marketing? Well, that wasn't one of the questions that you gave me to think about earlier. So I think the definition of business is really anything that you do or want to do for money. And this could be your business actually could be a job. If your job is to clean floors, to sell product, to uh, be a lawyer or an attorney, you are in business even if you work for somebody else. You personally have something to do every day and you need to think about yourself as a business. So I think that's number one is the business side of it. Marketing is a very different question because a lot about marketing, people think of advertising, people think of putting their brand out there, people think of trying to sell something. But marketing is really positioning, marketing is thinking, marketing is planning, marketing is knowing who your client is or who you serve. And if you know who you serve, how you communicate with them. All of that is marketing. We just pigeonhole it in the business community into advertising. But marketing is everything that goes into thinking about it, planning for it, and doing it. So do you feel like when someone gets their MBA, the professors and the teachers that are, ta that are, that are, that are preaching the knowledge that they have, do you think that's adequate to make it for you in business, in today's <laughs> business? I think it's an interesting question because my wife did go get her MBA and I sat alongside her as she studied and she learned a lot of great things. But no matter how much you learn in a book, no matter how much you read, it, it does not take the place of what goes on in the real world. We're seeing it right now. You could read every book and done everything properly, quotes, and a pandemic hits and all of a sudden you're working at home and there is no book to tell us what to do right now. You have to learn it, you have to think it, you have to take action on it. And interestingly enough, I've got a podcast called The Entrepreneur's MBA, Lessons You Can't Learn in School, where I interview everyday entrepreneurs like you do and learn the lessons that they learned along the way because there are things that they thought of and it just didn't happen and they had to pivot and they had to think differently and we're living that live right now. So I, I, well, what, I'm, what I'm trying to get is based on you have done so many podcasts with so many people. My question is this. If you had to choose and it was like, you know, two path, you can go to school, get an MBA or listen to the podcast or go and learn from these people that are doing it on a daily basis. If the money for schooling wasn't an issue that you were not going to come out of school owing $200,000, I don't know how much MBAs in Phoenix, Arizona, but... I think in LA is about one hundred fifty, two hundred thousand dollars, give or take, depending on where you go. What what choice would you recommend to people? Well, I hope parents aren't listening and get mad at me about education. But you don't get a better education than than you get by playing in traffic, right? If if you go out and you try something, you'd have to fail at a lot of things to lose two hundred grand versus spending 200 grand and then going to try things. No matter what you learn in school, you still have to go out there and try things. You could spend time on my free podcast. You could buy a $20 book and probably learn as many skills as you need to be successful as you're going to learn in school. School is going to give you knowledge and it's going to give you comfort and may give you that piece of paper that people will applaud you for. But when you have to go and say, my name's Adam and this is what I do, how can I help you? They don't teach you that in school. That only happens from actually doing it. So I don't think school's useless, but I think learning from the real world is a much better use of your time and money. I couldn't agree more with you. That doesn't mean if you want to become an attorney, you shouldn't go to school. I'm just saying, what if there was a day? I envision a day where if somebody shows up to school, the counselors will say, what do you want to do? And they want to say, let's say they say they want to become an attorney because my wife is an attorney. Let's say they want to say they want to become a doctor. Or well, my sister is a doctor. Let's say they want to say, oh, I want to become an engineer. Great. My dad is an engineer, right? So I got all those highly educated individuals in my family within cross, with close proximity. But what they don't tell you, the counselor should say, oh, you want to become an attorney? That's fantastic. 
we have these five, you know, attorney law firms that we work with. You should go do an internship. It's mandatory for you to go do internship if you're in a law degree program. You should go pick one of these five or 10 or find your own, but you must bring a proof that at least every week you're doing five hours. We need you in those things because what if after one year of being in a law firm, you're like, this is bullshit and I don't want to do it and you leave. You just save yourself three years and potentially $150,000 saving instead of you wasted only 50000 Or you go work for an engineer firm after a year, you're like, this is, I love this. This is exactly what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And you get really good at it. Well, I, I mean, what you're saying is, ha, was the model of the world for a thousand years uh, until, you know, Man, whatever. you took away my thunder. I thought I was the only one that came up with that. <laughs> yeah. This is how we live for forever <laughs> until the last 200 years where it what? said, hey, you've got to have a college degree in order to to get a job in order to be successful, in order to do anything. The apprenticeship world, you followed somebody, you watched what they did. You know, if you wanted to be a blacksmith, you went and hung out with a blacksmith and you pounded some metal into a bucket or whatever, into a sword, and you learned and then you decided this is what I'm gonna do and then you took over the business of the, the mentor, the person that was teaching you. It's only really an, an American idea of go to school and you will get a job. And that's why most people two years out of school are doing nothing with what their major was. Not one thing to do with their major is what they're making money at. Just two years out of school. You spent four years learning something and you don't do it later. Or if you go to the attorney example, you've got people that they want to be an attorney because they watch, you know, whatever, law and order, and they think it's awesome. And then they get in front of a courtroom for the first time and they shit the bed and their client loses, has to write a big check or goes to jail because they're not built for that because they didn't practice it in law school. Yeah, you can do a mock trial in law school in front of your buddies, but that's not the pressure of somebody's they life on the line. They don't teach you immigration law. They don't teach you marriage law. They got one state planning you know, class that you take. They don't teach you. Listen, they don't even teach you the, what do they call it? The, the, the court that you can't take attorney. The, the, I forgot the name. Literally, I forgot that. <laughs> I mean, they don't even teach you any a small claim court. They don't even teach you what to do a small claim court. Right. And that's what you don't even need an attorney. You represent yourself. And that's, I mean, it's crazy. They don't do that. So am I hearing that you're saying college is a big scam? Are you saying that? I, interestingly enough, I have a lot of friends that I went to college with that in our current environment, because we've got not a whole lot to do and a whole lot more time. We're picking up the phone. We're talking to people. One of the biggest groups that I'm reconnecting with are my college friends. Lots of them very successful. I'm doing business with several of them. I've got some projects with others. So from that standpoint, it has been a great network, a great group of people that I get to spend time with and now get to do business with 25 years later. But if you know why you're going to college, it's perfect. Most people don't know why they're going to college. They're going to college because we tell them they have to and they need a piece of paper. If you know, I'm going to college to fill my brain with knowledge so when I get out of college, I can serve people in this way. College is amazing because information helps. It's just like any book that you read. You can pick up a book off the bookshelf that I, I can't see my bookshelf, but I've got books over here. I could read one that has nothing to do with business or marketing or strategy, which is what I talk about but has to do with the brain, right? And then I'm talking to someone and all of a sudden we start talking about the brain and now I've got knowledge that furthers that conversation. If you know that's what college is for, then I think college is amazing. If you think college is for your job or college is going to get you a job, then I think you need to change your thinking. Don't go to college if you think that's the path to money. Think of college as the path to information that will allow you to serve more people and money is a kind of totally separate conversation. Totally separate conversation. Can I share something really profound with you? When I showed up to UCLA, they had this open house for MBA class enrollment that they had. I caught the, the professor red-handed and he never printed a business card for himself never owned the corporation, never opened the business. There was no marketing. 
He's never, he, he didn't have a Facebook at that time, right? Anything that you could think of, that it's basic knowledge on social media and on YouTube for starting a business, right? I'm talking about like the lowest, if you want to sell something that's for like five bucks, you go through these phases and you do. And this guy is teaching MBA classes for 20 years or plus, and he didn't have any of those. So to me, it's like our education system needs to be upgraded, but I don't want to leave it up to the education system. I want to leave it. We need to empower our citizens. We need to do the right thing for ourselves instead of blaming the system, because then it's an entitlement system that you think the government or education is going to go do something for you. We got 330 million people in the United States. There's no way that the government is going to be able to do everything for you. That's just not going to happen, right? So we have to empower the citizens to go do something. So here's my other question. So what is the number one cause of failure among entrepreneurs or the top two, three, based on your podcast? What have you seen? What's the trend? Uh, number, number one, first and foremost, is, is overthinking, underdoing. Right. The that's number one. Why do businesses fail? They get caught up either at the beginning. They're too scared or too nervous or not perfect timing to go out and talk to people. That's number one. Number two. And this is a little bit odd because I'm a planning and strategy guy, but they over plan, over strategize and never get going now or they or they plan incorrectly. Like they they plan to go do something. They don't plan to have success. And so number one, they don't do. And number two, they don't plan for success. They plan for the business and those totally, two totally different things. And I know you're a big big advocate of writing things down, especially your plan. Yes. Yes. Right. Every business, every business owner knows what they think they want. It's right in here. Right. I want to make a million dollars. I want to make a hundred thousand dollars. I want to get my business to in the hands of a million customers. We can all think it, but if you don't write it down, how do you know what to do first? How do you know what to do second? You've got a list of things. Sequence matters. If it's in the wrong sequence, it's not going to work right. A lot of people go out and they want to do something. They do Facebook ads and they don't get any return on it. Why? Because they were out of sequence. They didn't plan for who am I talking to? What time of the day do they listen? How do they interact with me? Is it through Facebook versus LinkedIn? And they go out of sequence. They do their ad first and then the planning second. The second thing that planning does that most people miss is if you don't have it written down, how is the rest of your team going to know what you're doing? If you've got employees, are they bought in? Do they understand exactly what it is that you have in your head? You can tell them. But are they owned into it? Do they buy it? Can they look at it and say, yes, I see where I fit? Most businesses don't do that. So when you write down your plan and put it in the right sequence, your team members, sometimes they're they're partners, sometimes they're VAs, sometimes they're actual employees, they're going to know. And it's so much easier for them to do their job successfully if they know where they fit, why they're doing it, who they're serving, and what your overall vision is. God damn, that's a specific. I mean, that's yeah. going to take some mental activity to write that down. <laughs> well, the, the easy button is you call me and I walk you through it and I tell you step by step what to do. I just pull it out of your head. If, if you want to do it on your own, block off an hour. And, and can I give my like six steps? I don't know how much time we have. I got six yeah, easy because steps. All day long, man. This is very, very important. This is probably the most important thing that people need to hear. So take your time. Explain all right. as much as you want. All right. So this six steps to creating your plan. The first, and I call it my custom plan because it spells custom and I can remember it. So the C in custom is to create your story. What is it that you want to do? If you're looking out five years or 30 years and you're writing your autobiography, what did that story say? Get really clear about it because the more clear you are, the easier it is to figure out the steps to do it. Number two. So the first one was clarity? Yeah, create your story. Oh, create your story. Got it. Go ahead. All right. And the second one, and this is your the, the mini SWOT analysis. This is the you. Understand your strengths. What are you good at? Too often, and this is probably our educational systems problem, but too often in our world, 
we try and do the stuff we're bad at or learn the stuff we're bad at rather than focusing on what we're good at. I am terrible at going on Facebook and doing advertising or being creative and coming up with witty posts to put out there that hopefully go viral. I make my money with my brain and my mouth. That's what I'm good at. If I know that's a strength, how do I build into my plan that I can be out there talking to people, saying things, doing lives like this, using my strengths? So that's number two is the you. Understand your strengths. The S is to supplement your weaknesses. This is where we say, all right, I am bad at these things. Rather than learning these things, who can I hire? Who can I outsource to? Who can I partner with? What technology can I buy to do that for me? Because it's going to do it faster, better, and cheaper than if you do it yourself. Almost every time. So create your story, understand your strengths, and then supplement your weaknesses with somebody who's better, faster, and cheaper than you are. The next step is to tailor your expectations. The goal setting industry is, I don't know, $5 billion every year in people writing down their goals and buying books on goals and, you know, New Year's resolutions, which are goals. And statistically, it says that 97 plus percent of those things never come true. They never come true. And the main reason, I think, is because we don't expect them to come true. If I want to make $100,000, and I have a goal, I'm going to make $100,000 this year, but in my heart, I think I'm going to make 25. That's what I expect. You know what? I'm going to make 25 grand, not 100, because I only expect to make 25. We don't set goals for our employees to show up at work. We don't set goals for the light to turn on when we flip the switch. We expect those things to happen. So why do we set goals for ourselves? So the next, the fourth step is to tailor your expectations. And that means not reducing your goals. That means upping what you be your belief in them what you expect. So tailor your expectations is the T. O, and this is a big one, is to optimize your environment, right? If you want to lose weight and you have cookies in the cabinet, open cabinet, insert cookie in mouth. Really easy to do. But if you throw the cookies away, you have to want a cookie, you have to find your car keys, you have to get in the car, you have to drive to the store, you have to pick out the cookies, you have to get to the cash register, you have to pay for the cookies, and hopefully you get home before you start eating them. That's like seven things that you have to do. So when you think about it in your business, what is getting in the way of business? It could be spending time on Facebook scrolling through in the middle of the day. So how do you optimize it? You turn off Facebook. You can put a blocker on your phone. You can't use it between 8 and 5. You look around your office. There's a stack of paper that you haven't looked through. It's in your head all day long. No matter what you're doing, you're thinking about that stupid stack of paper. Get rid of the stack of paper. If you get magazines, I don't know who gets magazines this, these days because they're two weeks or a month old by the time you actually get them and they're sitting on your desk, are you ever going to read them? They're getting in your way. So how do you optimize your environment? Get rid of the stuff. Get rid of the cookies. Sometimes that's people in your life. But get rid of those cookies so you don't eat them. So optimize your environment. And then the M in custom is market like hell. You want to always be marketing. And like I said at the beginning, marketing is not just advertising. It's not just going out and meeting people and networking. Marketing is thinking about it. It's planning for it. It's looking at what competitors are doing. Like competitors, for me, that are in strategic planning and marketing, they can go to my website. So go to somebody's website and see what they're doing. Is there something you can model? Don't steal what they're doing, but model what they're doing. If you're on Facebook and you see an advertisement for your industry, click on it. Sorry that I, you, know, you just cost someone 40 cents because you clicked on an ad you're not going to buy, but click on it. See what they're doing. Sometimes buy their product. Russell Brunson talks about this that he spends hundreds of dollars a, a week, a month, a year buying other people's stuff to see what, what steps did they go through, what funnel did they bring him through that he can learn from, that he can model. Again, we're not stealing people's stuff. We're just saying, hey, that's awesome. I think I can do that for me. So custom, create your story, understand your strengths, supplement your weaknesses, tailor your expectations, optimize your environment, and market like hell all the time. And if you do that, you write those down and you just fill in the blanks. I want you to hire me. I'd love for you to call me, but fill in the blanks. You have a plan, right? It's done. You just did it. You can do it in five minutes. Now that you have that plan, 
Now we can dig deeper into each of those categories and figure out, all right, how do you do what strategic initiatives do you have to do that feed into that plan? And those strategic initiatives build tactics of things to do every day. And when you're done with it, when you wake up in the morning, you know exactly what you're doing, why you're doing it, and who you're doing it for. So that's, awesome. the, that's the model. So do you have a course on this? Can we take a course on this? You got a course? I, I, have, I have a course. I've got a 52-week course that walks you through that, but it's one thing a week for 52 weeks to build a business over the course of the year. I let you jump ahead in it if you're a fast learner, but it is everything you need and built into it. You're going to get your email funnel. It's going to have emails already written. You just plug it in. It's going to have a coursework. It's going to have templates for your website. Everything is built into it. It's going to show you what your business card should say, what your website should look like. Where have you been all these the years? What the Where have you been all these years? Why you never message me? What's up with that? Now I'm feeling very. Now I'm. Now you broke my heart. Why you haven't? I'm message? sorry. I, I, I don't know. I, you try to put it out there, and I meet a lot of people, and then I get busy and work, and then COVID hits, and all of a sudden now I'm online and I'm not out in the universe. I don't know. I get on a roll when I talk about this because I'm super passionate about if. If I, I have this belief. When I wake up in the morning, I have a firm belief that I can fundamentally change anybody's business or life with one thought, one idea, or one conversation. Like, I, I really go into everything like that. I'm kind of, like, pathologically overgiving in terms of, hey, here's an idea, or did you think about this, or have you tried, right? And if I go into every conversation like that, then likely I'm going to help someone. I'm going to serve them. And I think if I had a conversation with every business owner in the world, I could tell them one thing along the lines of what we just talked about that could transform their business. And that's why I, that's why I do it. And that's why I appreciate you and your platform and your stage to, to be able to do this. And hopefully As one person fact, out there is just thinking, like, dude, that's cool. Yeah, we got, we got a business. Uh, we got a Zoom training that's actually happening. We just wrote the email for it. But we're trying to do it for local people in Los Angeles. And we're going to get a lot of business owners because, um, I don't know, my email list is over 100,000 just for L.A. Uh, individuals, the business owners. So we want to get that going very fast. And, you know, we're just doing it. It's one of those uh, trial bases. We want to see if during COVID-19, that's one way that we could give back. We have a lot yeah. of coaches on the platform where they want to give back. And potentially network with each other, do business with each other, whatever it comes out of it. But the main element is bringing influencers that could definitely help these people. And 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 you touched upon it already. You talked is, I call it the hybrid version of the old school meeting the new school. Old school business owners above age forty five, they may not be that familiar with the online platforms. And then we got the younger ones that are relatively good at the technology, but they don't know the old school business stuff that you need to know when yeah, you make the it, deals. You go into the room, you know, you, you got to read the thing, you got to communicate, you got to say the things at the right time because it's a $500,000 deal. A, a 25-year-old social media will not be able to carry themselves well in that conference room. So you want someone who's older, who's done it. So it's like bringing the old school and new school together, not that one is better than the other. It's just merging them together. So yeah. it's an ambitious goal that we got, especially with me being busy as hell. But we'll definitely reach out to you and see if we can do that because I think a lot of business owners, brother, they need that. Or a lot of people don't, may not comprehend. Our entire country and economy depends on small business owners. If small business owners are hurting, our country is hurting. A lot of people think it's the Fortune 500 companies. It's not. It's no. the small business owners that makes things go around. Yeah, that's, I mean, they, and that's the, the thing that the media doesn't really talk about. 75% of jobs are created by small business owners. And the worst part about what we're going through right now, and you've probably seen this in the people that you know, the people making a hundred grand or more, they're just working from home. They didn't get laid off. They're not hurting. They probably have more money now than they did then because they're not spending as much. But it's the, the 40,000 and under, the employees of small businesses, the receptionists, the file clerks, the people working in restaurants, the, the, the people working in mom and pop shops, the people working at the hardware store. Those are the people who all got laid off because people aren't going outside and they can't frequent these businesses and these small business owners who have hired them 
you know, there are some, some loans and some things they can do, but they can't support them. So we need to help them. If we help these small business owners, give them better training, give them better access, help them think a little bit differently. Hopefully they can bring some of these employees back and think about their business differently. And uh, I, I just, I just had a thought, but it, I forgot it, but it was along the lines of what you were talking about and, um, bringing the old school and the new school together. New school, they don't want to talk to people. They like to do email. They like to text. They like to do quick chat, right? Old school, they're like, um, I don't do email. I just talk on the phone. Well, that's great in this environment, but you have to reach people. You only have a certain number of people in your phone. Oh, I remembered what I was going to say. So there's a lot of people that I'm talking to, and I wish we could get this point across. There are so many business owners who are sitting back saying, you know what? I'm just going to bide my time. I'm going to hang out. This is going to pass, and when it passes, you know, I'm going to get back to business as normal. But in thought that was going to happen. Maybe we thought that was true. But now we're in June, and now it looks like, especially in California and Arizona where we are, and all they talk about, I mean, you think you're going to go outside, and it's like the walking dead out there, and you're, you're going to get eaten if you just leave your house. This could go on for the entire summer. Forget about second wave and fall. We're seeing it right now in, in some of the, the southern states that didn't get affected earlier. And you can't wait. You can't just sit back and wait for something to happen. You have to take, use this You're time. To take action. Learn. If you don't go with the change. Change is coming. If you don't go with the flow and change, you will be replaced. Simple as that. As yes. brutal, as honest as it gets. If individuals, if business owners do not modify, upgrade, change, whatever the name you, you're, you're comfortable with saying, I say change because I welcome change. That's the way. If you don't adapt, modify, and change and upgrade, you're going to be obsolete. When you're obsolete, you're going to be out of business. There might be a delay. It might take a year or two for you, for, for you to be out of business, but you're on that path. So I appreciate you taking this time and being here and trying to convey the message. You and I are definitely going to talk, especially you in Arizona. You're literally down the block, man. I could go yeah. from my house to Phoenix downtown within five hours. So literally, you're down the block from us. So yeah, and totally. You're only can less than an hour flight. Can I can I leave one more thing for the for people out there sure, that are sure, stretching yeah, out yeah. that don't know what to do, or you're watching this because you wanna you want to be an entrepreneur, but you know you're struggling a little bit. If you're struggling during this time, no matter what your situation is as a business owner looking for more clients, as a unemployed person looking for a job or looking for a, a, a business to go. A friend of mine taught me this and it's something that, that I've been preaching as much as I can. If you don't know what to sell, what to do or where to go, ask everyone you know this one question. Is there something you need I might be able to help you with? Is there something you need I might be able to help you with? You know, who knows what they're going to say? They may say, I need to lose weight. Cool. Maybe you know someone that's a weight loss coach, or maybe you are in a multi-level marketing thing that has diet pills, or I need to make more money. Cool. You should follow my elite mastermind. You should reach out and, and see what they're doing over there. Watch this video. I got two minutes to tell this story. Guy I know worth $100 million, literally $100 million plus, and he's got the whole world by his the whatever by strings and he got a huge ego and he started he was mean to his employees he was mean to his customers he started drinking too much probably doing too much coke or whatever too many strippers mean to his wife almost ruined his marriage lost all of his money all of his money and had to file for bankruptcy it was a soul sucking need for a new way of life and he found goodness and gratitude at, at, the, at the bottom of this pit of losing everything he, could, he, could, he ever thought he wanted. And he was out of money, and he's like, I, what am I going to do? I, I don't know. And so he started reaching out to his friends, and he said, hey, is there anything you need that I may be able to help you with? And one of his friends said, well, I want to buy a yacht. And he's like, I want a $10 million yacht but I want to get a deal on it. I want to go to the dealer and spend 10 million on a yacht. And when you're worth a hundred million at one point, you know, people that are buying $10 million yachts. And he said, all right. So he had nothing to do. So he called up a couple yacht dealers. He called up some other buddies and said, Hey, you know, anyone selling a yacht? 
finds a guy who's going through a similar circumstance, needs to sell his yacht, needs the cash. And he's like, I've got this yacht. I've got an appraisal for $10 million, but I need to get rid of it. Um, I need, I'll sell it for $8.5 million. And my friend said, well, if I can get it sold in a week, will you take $8 million? He's like, I'll take $8 million cash by X day out the door, but I don't want them. To, I'm not fixing anything. Just walk on it. Check it out if you like it. Do it. Went back to his guy and said, hey, I found you a yacht that has all the specifications you want. It's got a brand new appraisal for $10 million, and I can get it for $9 million for you. So you have a million dollars in built-in equity from day one. The guy went on the yacht, said this is the perfect yacht, wrote a check for $9 million. My friend took the $9 million, paid the other guy $8 million, made a million dollars, all within a week of his bankruptcy being finalized. Now, I'm not saying we're all going to put a million dollars in the bank in a week, but that's what that question can do, and that's what's so powerful. So if you're struggling, even if you're struggling in your own business and you can't sell your widget, be like, hey, is there something you need I can help you with? And they say, I need, I'm struggling at work. I, I don't know what to do next, what to do first. Hey, I met this guy, Adam, DM him, he'll help you out. And then, you know, then you get a referral fee for it. So hopefully that helps. I know that was a long story. I said it'll be two minutes and it was no, like four, it. but it, hopefully it, it was a good story. Point. No, definitely. I loved it. You and I are going to be in contact. So how do people find you, Adam? Um, best way right here. Just uh, DM me at Adam Kipnis on Instagram. Or go to coachwithak.com is my website. Or adam at coachwithak.com is my email. Love to connect with you. Let me know how I can help. And let me know how I can help other guests and all your listeners. Definitely. You and I are going to be in contact. Uh, that's happening within the next week or two. So I'll, say, I'll shoot you some more information. Let's see if it works out with your schedule. And we get you in front of these people. Let's see if we can help some people. Love to. Love to help. Thanks for the platform. And thanks, everyone, for watching us today. You got it, brother. Talk to you soon. Stay safe. Thanks. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.